Hi everyone, my name is Sam, and my story is about how I got the house I always dreamed of. Anyway, watch and listen very carefully. Growing up, I always wanted to have a nice cozy house. To have its own beautiful front, yard, and pool. This is due to the fact that my parents and I always wandered around renting apartments and I was stressed. Every two years we had to move. No one knows how to assemble and disassemble things from boxes more professionally than me. No one can boast of a collection of moving boxes. I learned the numbers of all the moves, knew the movers by sight, and learned how to quickly disassemble tables, couches, and cabinets with my dad. And when I arrived in a new place I immediately went on a scouting trip. I looked out for the nearest markets, pharmacies, schools, and hospitals. But, it's not funny anymore. Because of the suitcase mood, I had no friends, because I was afraid to be friends with anyone. What's the point if you have to leave anyway? It was the same with my parents. Mom kindly talked to her neighbors, sometimes went to visit them, but she never initiated us into our affairs. Yes, we all learned what to say and what not to say. We had special secrets. Maybe you thought that the reason for moving was a crime and we were criminals forced into hiding? No, it was much simpler than that we had no luck with apartments. In one of them, we found rats in the basement, or rather their lair. We just couldn't get them out, so we decided to leave, and in another place, my dad had no luck with his job, so we moved to another state, where my mom got terrible allergies to local vegetation. Well then I had a bunch of academic problems, fights, just so you understand, I didn't fight. I just got beaten up. One time my mom offered me to go to martial arts classes, but I told her, why, we're going to get out of here anyway, and I'll forget all the things I did not have time to learn. And I was right, and that's the way it is all the time. We didn't even take a Christmas tree because we knew we would lose it when we moved. Like a lot of my stuff that I lost. And then I grew up, I had to learn how to socialize like my mom said. As for any clubs, I was old, I decided to go part-time and got a job delivering flowers in a decent store. As a hired worker I was perfect. I carried out my duties, spoke little, rode my bike fast, and was good-looking in person. Oddly enough, one day, at one of the houses where I brought my order, a strange woman opened the door for me. She introduced herself as Alice. She was wearing a robe and mistook me for her son. Jonathan, come on in, honey. Hello ma'am, but I'm not. Come in, would you like some tea? It was my last order, so it was time. And I was just getting a little cold outside in the snow. Okay, that would be great. Take off your jacket, come on in. I sat down on the beautiful couch. All the furniture in the house was covered with sheets. Are you guys going to move in? Yeah, you know, I wanted to surprise you. What is it? She sat down next to me, poured me some tea, and brought me some cookies. I took a sip. She hugged me and started rambling on about totally different things. I just listened to her, that I could do. She spoke so inspirationally and then abruptly fell silent. I didn't know how to defuse the situation so I said the flowers should be put in a vase of water. Aw oh yes, they are so beautiful, thank you for the gift son. You're welcome, I'm not your son. Come on, humble man, I know they're from you, you just brought them. Come on humble man, I know they're from you, you just brought them. But, you ordered them, and you paid for them too. It doesn't matter, as long as you brought them. They are my favorite, thank you. She put them in a vase and then said she was tired and went to bed. I got up from the couch and wanted to leave, but suddenly I felt dizzy. I woke up right where I was sitting. And that woman was sitting next to me. I was so scared. I said, who are you? Where am I? It's okay Jonathan, let's go and eat. She invited me to the table. I saw that it was late. I wanted to call home, but I didn't have my phone with me. Where's my phone? I put it away so you can eat properly, let's go. Listen lady, thank you for everything, but I think I've been here too long. I should go home, my mother is waiting for me. I'm your mother, don't make this up, sit down and eat with me. I got scared, but I did what she told me. We started eating dinner, and during dinner she kept looking at me, pouring hot soup. Is it good? Yeah, thanks. You've grown so much, I can't believe it. How are you doing with your girlfriend? I don't have a girlfriend. You don't? Well, that's right, you have to buy a place first. By the way, here's my present. She held out her hand with the keys. I opened my mouth. What is it? It's a graduation present for you. I'm giving you this house. Why? I'm nobody to you. How am I nobody? You are my son, but I am not yours. Silence. You are my son, that's all. What? Now that you're an adult you can give up on your mother? She got up from the table and took some medicine. I realized that there was no way out, so I decided to play along. 
Are you still taking your medicine? You remember? How nice. Yeah, the medication that Dr. Bierman prescribed me. And how's that going? Does it help? Yeah, I feel really good. Um, mom, I have to go see a friend. I promised I'd help him. I'm gonna go out for a little bit, okay? Already I'm gonna be bored. Please? Okay, go, but make it quick. I got up from the table and I don't remember anything else. When I opened my eyes again, I was already lying in a bedroom I didn't know. I went to the window and noticed the police officers. That woman was standing there, talking to them. They must have been looking for me. My parents must have been looking for me. What should I do? I knocked on the window, but it was super airtight, so they wouldn't let any screams or knocks through. The cops left and she looked at me through the second floor window and into the house. I quickly propped the door open with a chair and started poking around the room. And I found pictures. They were pictures of her with her son. Damn, I really look like him, I thought. There was a folder on the table. From the looks of it, it was her son Jonathan's room. But what had happened to him? I rummaged through the notes, ours his diary, and realized that Joe had run away from his mother a couple of years ago with his girlfriend. Then that she was found to have a psychological disorder. Then I got into the phone that was inside the desk. It was his phone. She was texting him that she would give him a house just to get him back, give him money, and whatever else he wanted. I see. She won't just let me go, I said to myself. Knock knock. What? Open up Jonathan. Mom brought soup. Then I thought, I turn off every time she gives me something to eat. So she's drugging me. I had to play along to get away from her. I opened the door and gave her a big hug. Mommy mommy. I miss you so much. I was sick without you. Wow. Son, you haven't done that in so long. I love you. And I love you. Shall we go eat in the kitchen? Will you pour me some tea? Sure son. We went downstairs and she asked me what kind of tea I wanted. Black. As usual. She brewed something, and then a plate flew in my direction. I managed to dodge it. What are you? Who are you? My son only drinks green tea. I ran to the exit, but the door was locked. She said she was going to call the cops and I even got excited and told her to do it. But she suddenly ripped out the phone and broke it on the floor. You're not going anywhere, Jonathan. Man, she must have some serious problems in her head, I thought and ran to the other room. I ended up in her bedroom. It was covered with pictures of her son. I had to find something that meant a lot to her and that only she and he knew about. That's when I found Jonathan's phone in my pocket and found her number and called immediately. She broke into the room and noticed that her phone on the shelf was ringing. With shaking hands, she picked it up and cried. And I said, Mom, see, it's me. She hugged me and wouldn't stop crying. I saw her sleep medicine on her mirror. Grabbed them technically and said I'd get some water, slipped some in there, and called the cops from Joe's phone. She fell asleep after the first sip. The cops busted down the door and freed me. My parents were with them. They took her to the station. Her neighbors were standing outside and I heard them talking about how lonely she was, how she still couldn't forgive her son who had left, and her husband who had also left her. I even felt a little sorry for her. The delivery service compensated me and I resigned from there. We moved again, by the way, but now I was the initiator. We came to a tiny little town where I got a job at a veterinary clinic as an assistant. I think this place would be perfect for a quiet life. Hello everyone, my name is Eliza. I had a difficult period in my life, even the most difficult. Of course, it's a little easier now, but what I went through almost made me give up. I will tell you everything now in more detail, and you please like the video, write your opinion in the comments, and do not forget to subscribe to the channel. I'm in high school. I'm 15 years old and I've never been an ardent party girl. Yes, I was the most ordinary girl who studied, helped my mother with chores around the house. My mother had a second marriage. That is, I lived with my stepfather. They had twins and my mother had absolutely no time for me. On the one hand, I understood that I was an adult and I needed to support my mother. It is more difficult for her, but on the other, I still felt the need for her presence in my life. But ever since she got pregnant, there has been less and less of her. The only thing left for me is to move on, go to school and help around the house. Well, then some kind of nightmare began. When the babies were born, it was great, of course. We were all happy, but most of all, I was worried about my mother. When they were discharged from the hospital, something started at home. There was a round-the-clock yell 
it was impossible to sleep or do homework in the house because the girls were constantly yelling, then one, then another. I had no idea how to help her, and on the other hand, I just wanted silence. Once, when my father left for work, my mother asked me to stay and help her with the little ones. I couldn't because I had an important exam waiting for me at school. I couldn't miss it. All of a sudden, she started yelling at me a lot. She called me a shitty daughter, and I was offended by her. What right did she have to call me that? Out of anger, I said a lot of unnecessary things to her. I probably shouldn't have said it, but I couldn't help myself. I shouted that it wasn't my fault that she had remarried and had to give birth. My mother felt like cold water had been thrown over her. She stood up straight and left. Full of anger, I slammed the door and ran to school. By the way, yes, that day I successfully failed the exam, and this made me even more angry. I've never been so angry before. Anyway, just in time for me to step out into the hallway after the exam, Cal came up to me. This is a guy from another group. He has been hitting on me for a long time, but I did not return his love. He invited me to a party in honor of the fact that his parents went on vacation and left him alone in their big house. I decided to accept the invitation and went with him as agreed. I was very drunk that night, and I think I was taken with a first glass of champagne. I felt so bad that I couldn't control myself anymore. All I remember is Cal pouring me another glass of champagne or wine and then inviting me into his bedroom. I didn't even say anything. I just went with him, and I don't remember much about what happened there. When I woke up the next morning, I felt like my whole body was hurting, including my head. Cal started to say something to me, but I put my hand over his mouth. I didn't want to hear it. I got dressed and left. I heard a lot more from my mother, and our relationship heated up. But the problems didn't end there. After a week, I noticed something. I had delayed menstruation. I bought a pregnancy test, and yes, it's like I've won the fucking jackpot. I got pregnant. All I felt at that moment was regret and confusion. I felt sorry for myself, and also terribly afraid. I now did not know what to do and how to be. I definitely didn't want to tell Cal about it, and I planned not to tell anyone yet. My mother knocked sharply on the bathroom door, and I ran out of it like I was scolded. I ran into my room and remembered that I had left the test in the bathroom. A second later, my mother ran out of there, shouting, Are you pregnant? I didn't have time to come up with an excuse, so I just said yes. She asked who the father was, and I said I didn't know, or rather I didn't remember. She almost had a heart attack. No, I wasn't hoping for anything, and I hadn't even decided what to do about keeping the baby or not but my mother's behavior made me give up, and I suddenly wanted to give birth to her for evil. She went and wailed every day, slowly dripping on my nerves. She demanded that I have an abortion. I said I was going to give birth. To be honest, I didn't expect such a reaction, but she collected all my things and put them out the door. I couldn't believe she'd done that. Well, how can you kick out your pregnant daughter? I felt a sense of despair and resentment, and all I wanted to do was cry. I cried a lot and every day. It's a good thing my girlfriend took me in. Natalie was kind, and she lived alone with her parents. Nat understood my situation and promised to help me in any way she could. I don't know how long I lay and cried. Apparently, it was influenced by hormones. It's been a week, and I haven't heard from my mother. Of course, this upset me even more. My stepfather didn't care about me. I didn't need anyone but myself and my girlfriend. As soon as I thought about it, someone came to the door. Imagine, it was my stepfather. He brought me money, food, and clothes. It turns out that Natalie told him where I was, and he decided to help a little. I didn't expect it. When I asked where my mom was, he said she was home with the girls, apologized for her, and said she was having a hard time so she was taking it out on me. I asked him to tell her that I was not a scapegoat, and that if it was so difficult for her to think about me, then let her not strain herself. Apparently, she had no place left for me in her life. My stepfather must have felt it too, 
so it was like he was apologizing. I accepted his help, and then he left. I gave the whole amount Natalie for my living expenses. We held out for another month, but I needed care, a doctor and all that, and I didn't even know where to go. I was so scared. I was getting even more depressed when someone knocked on our door again. I thought it was my stepfather again, but Cal was standing outside the door. He threw himself on me, kissed me, hugged me, and swore that he would love our child more than anyone else. I couldn't believe it. I thought he was kidding, but it turns out I was wrong about him. Cal hugged me and asked me why I didn't say anything, why I didn't tell him, and all I said was, are you sure the baby's yours? To which he replied that he did not doubt it for a second, and he was right. Cal talked to his parents and they took me home with them. He had a great family, they accepted me, and Cal started working for his father and earning money. I took a sabbatical from school to calmly go through the pregnancy and give birth. In general, wish me good luck, because in a couple of months, we will see our baby.